to prove to you that He loves you. He'll show you that He loves you because you've shown Him that you love Him. And there are those who wonder, how can I show God that I love Him? He said, if you love me, keep my word. If you love me, obey what I command you to do. If you love me, not only keep my word, but make sure you have my word. See, when you do what Hebrews 11, 6 says, to go after God's word diligently, he said he will reward you. He said in the scriptures in Matthew that if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteous, righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. I mean, it's not difficult. It's not hard. Go after God's word and you'll receive God's love and manifestation in your life. Notice in John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 24, He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. Jesus is acknowledging that if a person says, I love the Lord, but they're not willing to do what the Lord asks, then you have to make an evaluation as a believer. You must determine to ask that person who's naming Christ, who's, in fact, earlier today I was looking at a new special that was talking about the groups of people that were having a problem with integration in schools. And they were wearing a sheet on their body and they were wearing a cap on their head and they were talking about that they wanted to protect God and country from these people that are trying to integrate their schools. And on their insignia, on their robe, was a huge cross. And they were talking about how they were doing this out of a Christian response. Well, we'll know if it's a Christian responsibility to keep people from coming together based upon what the Word says. You see, God loves us. God loves everyone. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. How do you know if a person loves God and that the love of God dwells in them? You'll know it based upon their response to the Word of God. If they keep God's Word, if they have God's Word, if they're receptive of God's Word, and they're willing to obey God's Word, then the love of God dwells within them of a surety. But if a person says, well, I love God, and can't you see this big cross? And I'm going to burn a cross on your yard. And I'm going to burn a cross here and there. And I'm going to try to prove to everybody that I love God. I'm doing this for God and country. My question is, where is that in the scriptures? Turn to 1 John chapter 5 again. And we'll read this chapter because he will spell out specifically how to know if a person really loves the Lord. 1 John chapter 5, and we'll look at verse 1. 1st Epistle of John chapter 5, verse 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. That means if you love God, if God is your father, you can't be mad at his children. Because every one of God's children belonged to God and came as a result of the Father giving them life. And anyone who says to their brother or their sister in the Lord, I can't stand you or I don't want to be around you or you can't be a part of this organization or this church, this school or this church because of your color of skin or because I don't like you, how dwells the love of God in them? Because a person who really loves God will love his children. If you love the Father, you can't get mad at him for having more children because that's on him to have children. And the way his children look, that's totally on him. In 1 John chapter 5, I hope you're still following with me. 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat, that means the one who begat is the father who's birthing our children. He that loveth him, that's the father that begat, loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments. Notice 
that when we say we love God, we would love his children because they're children of God, even as you are a child of God, if you claim to be a child of God. And you would love God because God loves children, and then God teaches us how to get along well together as his children. You see, humans are not animals. Humans are made after the likeness and the image of God, which means that we're to prepare ourselves and conduct ourselves and reflect the character of our Father. We are born of His Spirit. And if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you're born of God. And that's why He declares, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Now, what do you mean you're born of God? Your spirit has been made alive unto God in your faith in Christ Jesus. And the Bible describes in Peter, the epistle of Peter, that you are born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. So that means you'll always, if you're a believer in Christ Jesus, you'll always be able to say, I have eternal life abiding in me. Looking at verse 3 of 1 John chapter 5 again, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Isn't it a beautiful thing that when you see a believer obeying what the Lord has asked us to do as Christians, loving one another, getting along together, encouraging one another, praying one for another, looking after one another's well-being. Are you aware that that pleases the Father? And when we come together in unity, God says, I command my blessings to be poured out upon you. He wants us to show our love one for another. And some of us have different responsibilities in the body of Christ. Some of us would be characterized as a foot, a hand, an eye, a nose, an ear, a mouth. Some are different parts, a joint, of your, a part of the body of Christ. But whatever part you have in the body of Christ, it's all needed. You're valuable, you're precious. And just because we do have different positions in the body, that does not mean that we could say one to another, I have no need of you. First John chapter 5, looking now at verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Now the world is considered to be like Egypt, or the world is considered those who are not in Christ Jesus. They are not in the body of Christ because those that are in Christ Jesus are new creations. And we're in the world, but we're not of the world. So believers in Christ Jesus, we're called world overcomers. That means you don't take your advice from the world to tell you how to treat your brother or sister in Christ. You take your advice from the Lord who tells you how to get along with your family in Christ. Verse 6 of First John chapter 5. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. That means there are those who try to put forth an argument that we are not all the same simply because we don't all look the same, talking about humans, even those who believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ they're referring to. You all, there's different kinds of Christians. No, there's only one body of Christ. There's only one Father. There's one Lord, one Holy Spirit, and we're told to walk in obedience to the Spirit of God. Now, he lets us know that people have their testimony or their 
opinions that they like to give concerning how Christians should be separated. But we're told from the scriptures that we have a witness from God. And we ought to be aware and we ought to acknowledge the witness of God. Now somebody may ask the question, though, can you give me a case example of that? The Civil War, for example. We saw people that were fighting one another because of principle, not because of, let's say, they just didn't like the way a person looked. You had people that were of the same supposed ethnic background fighting one another because it was the principle that was under issue. The principle was, is it right for slavery to be consistently practiced here in this country when the believers in Christ Jesus knew in their heart this ain't right. Now those who didn't have Christ in them, they didn't care. They just felt like whatever economically advantages them, that's what they're going to do. Because you got to just get over in life by getting all the money you can. But believers with consciences said, uh, no, nah, I can't continue doing this. Even if they were brought into it, they determined, I got to do something about it. And so you saw the great divide take place in America. And some people say, well, America, America, you're not a great country. We are a great country in the fact that we will allow for those that have a conscience to do what is right by God and acknowledge the witness of God in their heart to speak forward in free speech and to tell the truth. And this witness that we have of the Lord is the truth and is no lie. 1 John chapter 5, verse 9. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath, get, he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God has given to us, eternal life. And this life is in His Son. Now when He says this life is in His Son, you see, life is expressed on different levels. So, uh, from a science perspective, life, I took a class, you may have taken a class if you were mandated to go to school, as all of us that are citizens in America. But if you've come through any levels of school, you had to take biology. And biology, bio, means life. But it's not talking about this word life that it's referred to. Uh, there, there are those that acknowledge life on different levels. But this word life is referred to zoe, Z-O-E. This is talking about the God kind of life. You see, those who are in Christ Jesus that believe on the Lord, those who that are born of God, we have life on the inside of us. But it's a, it's a different life than what one would refer to as the bio life. That means all oh, everybody just shares breath. We've got a life that lets us know that we are in the family of God. And we have a life that comes from God. And our character is shaped by the life of God. Now because we have the life of God on the inside of us. We are able to then say, I'm going to live the life that God has called me to live. And that is the Zoe life, the God kind of life. That's the reason why people can be at odds one with another, but one has a revelation that, hey, wrong is wrong and right is right, where one says, I'm just, can't we just all get along? Well, how can we get along when there's two different lives that are being exhibited here? He says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 11, And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. That word life is Zoe. Verse 12, He that hath the Son hath life, or we could say it this way, Zoe, or the God kind of life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life, or we could say does not have Zoe, the life of God. Verse 13, these things are written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. 
Now there was a rich man that had come to Jesus and said, I have plenty of money, but I don't have eternal life. What was he really asking for? He was asking for the life that comes from God. You know, people on their accomplishments and hard work and, and discipline and effort and ability to respond to opportunities that can come to them, they can achieve great amounts of finances. But finances does not give you the Zoe life. This Zoe life or the God kind of life comes to those that believe on the Son of God, to those that receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior. He said in verse 13 of 1 John chapter 5, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. Notice, asking anything according to His will means that because we have His life in us, and we know that we have eternal life abiding in us, that eternal life necessitates that we do those things that are consistently promoting the God kind of life. And that's one of the reasons why the Civil War took place. Because those who said slavery is wrong, they knew that in heaven, slavery does not exist. They knew that in heaven, you're going to run into people of all different ethnicities, tongues, tribes, and nations. And if you've got a problem with people here of that diversity in heaven or on earth, you're going to seriously have a problem when you're in heaven. We're supposed to be preparing to go to heaven. Everyone's going to draw their last breath. Why can't you see that the Father who loves all of humanity, that gave his son for everyone, that the same Father wants us all to live the kind of life, the God kind of life, that he made us to enjoy? And he acknowledges unto us that his character is exhibited in his eternal life that abides in our heart. And he said, those who obey the witness of the Spirit and walk in the fruit of the Spirit, or we can say it this way, the personality traits of the Father, he said, no laws can ever be created that will cause you to have to repent of having that character or the character traits of God. Here in verse John chapter 5, verse 14, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Verse 15, and if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Now that's how you have answered prayer. How do I know I can have answers to my prayer? Because when I pray according to eternal life, the God kind of life, when I pray to promote the God kind of life, there's no way the Father would say no to me when I pray to him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that gave me the ability to be in the family. You see, when I ask anything according to his will, then I know he hears me. And if I know he hears me, then I know that I have the petitions that I desire of him. He's not in a position of hurting his children or causing his children to be frustrated and angry and say, well, do the best you can in life. No, no, you are his focus. You are his desire and love interest. Verse 16 of John's Gospel now, chapter 5. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he should pray for it. Now what do you mean by that? Well, you can never, you cannot violate your brother or your sister's will. That means if your brother or your sister in Christ determines that they want to go after sin, which another way of describing that would be, if they choose to go contrary to what God has revealed unto his word, if they choose to go against the commandments of the Lord and show that they're not loving God, you cannot make anyone love God. As much as you would like for them to receive the benefits of obedience, but you see, a person who rebels 
And a person who determines that they're not going to do God's will and they're willing to transgress the law of God as a lifestyle, he says, you can't pray and make a person do what's right. They still retain their will. Why? Because having your free will, a free will, meaning the capacity to decide to do what's right or wrong, is inherent in being made in the likeness and the image of God. So, we know that animals and birds and other creatures that God has made, they do things by instinct. Instinct means that they just do it as the seasons call out. What they should do, they do it. They don't even think about it. They just do it because it's part of their pre-programming. But humans are made with the capacity to make choices. And God lets us know that we can choose to obey and we can choose to disobey. We can choose to enjoy the benefits of obedience and the love of the Father lavishly being poured out upon us. Because he said, Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper in me in health, even as your soul prospers. But then there are those who choose to rebel, and if they choose to rebel, the Bible says, the way of the transgressor will be hard. But do I have to cry and begin to say, Oh, transgressor, you got to do what's right. I'm going to make you do what's right. You can't make the transgressor do what's right, even though you want them to, and you want them to not get into trouble. But boy, if they go contrary to the way God has given the commandment of his word, then they're going to find that the trouble awaits them. So we're told from the scriptures <clears throat> in verse 18 of 1 John chapter 5. He says, We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. Now this is not saying <clears throat> that a believer won't make a mistake. What he's saying here is that a believer is not going to choose transgression or choose to do wrong against God's commandment because they believe they're more just in doing wrong than what God said is right. That means if a person chooses to practice wrongdoing and it's okay with them, and it's not a problem for them to do it, and they have no problem, no, they're not even grieved in their heart about what they're doing. They may have thought that they were saved, but they may not be saved. They may have thought that they were born of God, but listen, if you're born of God, then you would have the nature of God. And God is not confused with His Word or His Spirit. God is consistent and the three are one. So if a person says, it's okay for me to practice wrongdoing, God understands. Well, he's already made it clear how he feels about sin. He hates and detests sin so much and the father of sin, which is the devil, so much that he was willing to let his own son become sin on our behalf so that we can have right standing with him on his salvation. We who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ are told. Let's look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. He says, We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but it says, He that begot that is begotten of God keepeth himself. Now, what do you mean he that is begotten of God keepeth himself? He says, he that is begotten of God knows that you are not of the, of the world any longer. When you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you should be able to remember, hey, I remember the day that Jesus changed my heart. I remember when I believed in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. I, I remember when I asked Jesus to come into my heart. Now, it may not have been, you know, an elaborate circumstance in a church. It may have been that you were walking in the garden and maybe someone was talking with you and just shared the good news of Jesus and you received the Lord right where you were. But what's important is this. When a question is asked of you, do you remember 
receiving, receiving Jesus as, as your Lord and Savior. Or, or another question, another, another way of saying it is, do you remember when you became born again? If you can't say, I remember the day I accepted the Lord. If you can't say, I remember that there was a time. Now, you don't have to give the necessary calendar date or the hour, but you should be able to go back in your thinking and say, I remember the day that I asked Jesus to come in my heart. I remember where I was and approximately how old I was. I remember doing that specifically. If you can't remember that, my advice to you is this. You may need to do it right now and let us not wait. That way you'll be able to record and say, I remember with the day I accepted Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. You can do it right now because the Bible says, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can do it right now. You can say, Jesus, I believe in my heart that you came to die for my sins. Jesus, thank you for being made the sin offering of God for me. Come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior because you're alive from the dead. You've been raised from the dead according to the scriptures. Thank you for being my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for forgiving me. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father, for making me a new creature. If you've done that, then you're a child of God. Write it down wherever you are, write it on a piece of paper, and just let somebody know, I received Christ as my Lord and Savior. I'm born of God, or I'm born again. Now, because you have received Christ in your heart, You've got a new nature. And you've got to learn how to allow that new nature on the inside, the life of God on the inside, to spring forth on the outside and influence everything in your life that you will ever encounter. Did you know that God's not poor? Did you know that God's not sick? Did you know that God is not confused? And he's not the author of confusion? If you will allow God now, who's on the inside of you, to come forth on the outside and influence everything you have to deal with, you want to live a whole new life because your life will be lived by the life of God or the Zoe or eternal life of God. We're still looking at 1 John chapter 5. Let's look at verse 20. What about verse 19 is where we left off. 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. And we know that we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. Wickedness means the whole world is twisted. The whole world is living bent. The whole world is off. The whole world is not hitting the bullseye on what pleases God. So we who are born of God should be able to say, I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. The world is missing it. They're shooting at a different target than what I'm shooting at. I'm looking to please God by obeying His commandments. The world is thinking the commandments of God are foolishness, and I'm not doing what God asks to be done. In verse, in verse 20 of 1 John chapter 5, And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true, and we are in Him that is true, even in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Or we could say it this way, and the real life, the Zoe life, or the life of God. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. And then he says, Amen. That means so be it. Can you agree with that? Now, if you're out as a believer in Christ Jesus, and you're, gar you're garnishing or you are picking up and you're collecting idols and your confidence is in talismans and rabbit's feet and lucky charms and, and you're trying to find out how to have a good day by the horoscope or you've got people telling you, you know, I'm your spiritual advisor. Well, what church are you pastoring? I'm not. A, oh, how can you be a spiritual advisor? Well, I just claim to know a lot more than you. Uh, I'll tell you what, let me receive my information from the written word of God. I'll find a good church. I'll be planted in that church. And I'm going to have a wonderful life. 
See, there are those that are trying to keep you from advancing in the things of God. Turn over in the book of Acts, and we're going to see there was a man that was purposing to keep Paul the Apostle from having an influence in this guy's life that Paul was preaching to. Let's look, look at this here, and let's see here. Uh, there was an attempt by this man to keep Paul from having influence in the life of the governor or the leader of the land. Uh, let's see here. I know it's in here. It's in the Bible. I've read it. Uh, turn it over. We're looking in the book of Acts, and we'll find it. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. This is a beautiful thing. I'm, I'm glad God had it written so that we won't lose it. And it is printed here. I know that it's here. And let's see. His name, the man called himself Bar Jesus. That means son of Jesus. He wanted to be a person identified with Jesus. But he did not want to obey Jesus. And because he didn't want to obey Jesus, he was trying to keep anyone who would come to Jesus from hearing about Jesus. And so he withstood Paul. I'm going to look at this from the Bible. And let's see, it's in here somewhere. I'm looking for it. Praise the Lord. Somebody said, well, why don't you just give up this go on? Well, I'll tell you the story, but I'm not giving up on it, okay? <laughs> because the Apostle Paul, when he was acknowledging that, that the Lord Jesus Christ should be listened to and obeyed, the person, let's see here. Yes, here it is. Acts, the 13th chapter. This is the reason why we're persistent. Because I'm thankful that it's written because it doesn't change. It's here in the scriptures, Acts, the 13th chapter. And I'm going to read it to you so that you'll be able to see it with your own eyes. Somebody said, well, I was waiting for you to find it. Well, praise God, I found it. All right, we'll do it. We'll read it together. Acts chapter 13, and I'll look at verse, let's see, verse 4. And it's referring to... Uh, talking about Paul and Barnabas being sent by the Holy Ghost. 13th chapter of the book of Acts, verse 4. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they had also John to their minister. And when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus. Now Bar means son of, Jesus is meaning that he's trying to consider himself a son of Jesus. Why? Because even though the devil doesn't like God, he always tries to put on a cloak that he is God. He wants to give himself over to being worshipped and praised even as he tried to get Jesus to fall down and worship him. It's interesting to note here that this man is going to withstand the knowledge of Jesus being given to the leader, but yet the man called himself the son of Jesus. And when I say to you that people are trying to assume a position of spiritual authority in your life, or trying to put themselves in a place where they want you to follow their advice, rather than the commandments of the Lord? Take heed to this example here. Acts chapter 13, verse 7, or verse 6. And when they had gone through the isle of the Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, who's, who, uh, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar-Jesus, which was the deputy of the country. Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God, or we can say it this way, the commandments which the Lord Jesus had given unto them. But Elamus, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation. That means this guy who called himself Bar Jesus also went by the name Elamus, but he was calling himself 
a sorcerer. He was calling himself as one who knew the source of all things. It's interesting that people say God knows nothing, but they claim to know everything. They find fault with the knowledge of God, but they feel like they should stand and proclaim and get people to follow their knowledge. We're told here, verse 8 of Acts, the 13th chapter, but Elam is the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, which stood him, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Now, what do you mean he's seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith? Well, when the gospel is preached, when the commandments of God are given, when a person says the Lord said, you know, the Lord is the author and the finisher of our faith, and the word that comes from God is called the word of faith. So, Elamus, the sorcerer, or Bar Jesus, was so his name was, was trying to keep people, the, the, here in this situation, the governor of the city, he was trying to keep him from hearing the word of faith. The word which would produce faith in his heart if he believed it and received it and would be given the zoe, the life of God. But I thought Elamus, or by Jesus, was his close companion and he was supposed to be giving him good advice. Yeah, well, you'll find out whether the close companion is trying to give them the good advice or the eternal life of God, the Zoe life of God, or whether they're really an emissary of the devil in cloak. Because this man, Bar Jesus, or Elamus, the sorcerer, was trying to stop the governor from really hearing the truth of the word of God. We're looking at Acts chapter 13, verse 8. But Elamus the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, which we know is called, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, Thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? You see, the devil is a perverter. He knows, the devil knows that God exists. The devil knows that Jesus Christ is the resurrected Lord. The devil knows that God wants people to have the God kind of life, eternal life. And the devil is always seeking to try to keep people away from receiving the life of God. What I'm saying to you is if when you attempt to go to church, you always find somebody telling you you don't need to go. When you hear somebody telling you, well, we got this going on, you're not going to church, are you? Why would a person purposefully, intentionally, with all the time of consistency, keep you or attempt to keep you from learning and having the faith that will cause you to enjoy the God kind of life? You need to ask yourself the question, what kind of person do I really have in my sphere of influence? I know the governor of the city was thinking, it's great to have somebody who's got knowledge, but when the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ was being offered to him by Barnabas and Paul, the second in command, as it were, or the man who was his, his advisor, was doing all that he could to keep the governor from hearing what Paul and Barnabas had to say concerning the Lord. When you have people that are rebelling against God and are willing to block you from getting to the knowledge of God and enjoying the life of God, you need to exercise your ability to make a decision and decide the way to show the love of God is that I've got to keep His commandments. I've got to go after His Word. His Word is not grievous. And if you have someone in your life that's telling you, you don't need to hear God's Word. You don't need to do what God says to do. Just as long as, you know, you do the best you can. You need to evaluate. Are you dealing with Bar Jesus? Are you dealing with someone who's Elamus, the sorcerer? Are you dealing with someone who's seeking the hinder you from growing in your faith? My advice would be, look at what the Word of God says. 
Those that love God will keep his commandments. Those who love God will do his word. Those who love God will go after his will in the earth realm, which is his written word. And notice what Paul said in verse 9 and 10 again of Acts 13. Then Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Now what was the doctrine of the Lord? The doctrine of the Lord is this. The kingdom of God is not just in meat and food and drink, meaning of liquid. The kingdom of God is in righteousness and it is in power and in demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Meaning that when you who believe on the Lord insist that you're not going to be distracted and you're not going to let someone hinder you from having God's best, then you exercise your authority and power and you declare, in Jesus' name, Satan, get under my feet. You declare, devil, you're not welcomed around me. You're not going to stop me or hinder me from having God's best. You see, as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're supposed to be diligently seeking the work and the word of God. In John's Gospel, the eighth chapter, the Bible says, if you, let's turn over and look at that. I'm not going to just quote it. John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. Let's look at that together. John chapter 8, John's Gospel, the eighth chapter, verse 31, 32. He says this, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. That means you're going to be free to live and enjoy life. You'll have life and have life more abundantly. And how do you have life and have life more abundantly? By continuing to go after the word of God. By continuing to love God's Word, to possess God's Word, to keep God's Word, and to grow in God's Word. And if you have anyone trying to keep you from the Word of God, then you may need to exercise your authority. I adjure you. In fact, I command you. Exercise your authority in Jesus' name and tell them, I'm not going to allow you to hinder me in my pursuit of the Word of God. Because your pursuit of God's Word puts you in a position where you can receive the benefits of those who love God. And Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my Word. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. In John's Gospel, I mean John's Epistle, he said this, the commandments of God are not grievous. That means, oh, the rewards and the benefits and the blessings. I quoted the scripture earlier, Matthew chapter 6. Let's look at this and we'll conclude with Matthew the 6th chapter. Because we're talking about God's word is not grievous. God's word should not be causing you problems. Because God's word only is a problem for the devil. And someone may say, well, it's bothering me. Maybe it's because you allowed Bar Jesus or Elam Mr. Sorcerer, or you allowed yourself to be a participant of the works of the devil because you just did not know that it was the devil that was inspiring you to do goofy stuff. The Bible lets us know. No man speaking about the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he says that you were led by these dumb idols. In other words, there. At one time, we were all listening to the devil and doing some stupid stuff. But when we came into the knowledge of the word, we began to be able to do what? To think like God would have us to think, to walk as he would have us to walk, and to enjoy life the way he would have us to enjoy it. Matthew 6, chapter, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, 
and all these things shall be added unto you. I love you, and I'm so grateful that you tuned into our Bible study. I'm thankful that you'll tune in again. This is Pastor Gary Ziegler of Spirit Food Christian Center, encouraging you. Follow the instructions on our website and social media, and all the different avenues that we're broadcasting, and be willing to keep the word before you. Guard the word in your heart, and allow your mouth to speak the word, and live the God kind of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Good. 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 Good.